Hello, tubers. This is Pat Jordan coming to you from the Grain Ghetto in Illinois. I have been in alternative media since 2008, so I've covered all the topics in my books and more in radio and on my private email list. This means that very few people across the planet have access to such an enormous collection of data that rivals the Manhattan Project because although I should be king shit of Poo Poo Mountain in terms of life-saving data by which to prosecute our survival here on Hell Planet, I have been marginalized by alternative media blackballing and the general restrictions of poverty. Telling the truth doesn't make money. I seek to make up for the lack of access to my particular genius because I no longer have to rely on a talk show host to deign to invite me to speak or avoid asking the right questions or having media avoid the right answers. I just say what's on my mind. Mostly, it's cuss words. But that's to get the steam out of the pressure cooker because if you're not angry too, well, perhaps you're not alive. I say genius unashamedly, so let's put it to the test. Although I project a bite your balls off and hand them back to you persona, I do consults with quite a number of women and I give them the best of what I can offer with total respect. Offline, I'm really nice to people and they seem to like me. But don't let that get out because it will harm my public reputation as a badass. One thing that I do know going all the way back to the 1990s is that the very thought of breast cancer brings terror into the hearts of women. I was in pre-med back then never graduated, thank the gods that don't exist, when I met a woman, a very attractive woman with green eyes, who shared with me, as attractive women are wont to do, her most intimate health history after having briefly met. I can't say what it is that causes females to tell me their reproductive history in synopsis on the first meet, but it happens all the time. I was surprised and dismayed that this cute girl told me that she had breast cancer that had been treated. I asked her where it was. She said it was her left breast. And then I asked her if she was ever vaccinated. She said yes. I asked her which arm. The conversation ended. You should have seen the look in her eyes. If you know the legend of vaccines, the idea is to shoot corruption into the body so that it creates a depot. This is a mass of shit deposited in the body so that little by little it will either seep out or be transported by dendritic cells for processing, thus conferring that myth of immunity by constantly stimulating the immune memory cells. That's a long time for toxic shit to be sitting in one location in the body. Thank God for modern vaccine design because hepatitis B surface antigen is the self-assembling nanomachine outside shell of a virus that they shoot into babies now. So it gets into your cells, takes over the machinery, and just pumps out the antigen to overwork the cells itself and force the immune memory cells to hop to like a prisoner in a gulag. Ever hear of chronic fatigue? Jesus, where was I? Oh yeah, the depot. So you got a shitload of shit stuck in your deltoid muscle. Again, they falsely implied that the shot only goes into the muscle. Of course, the needle in the liquid goes through the skin, past fascia, damages blood and lymph vessels on its way to its mythical destination. Yeah, it's systemic. That's why you get the fever and joint aches. Serum sickness. Wrote a book about it. But you wanted to know about the pretty woman and her left arm and left breast. Well, they give you a choice, don't they? Are you right-handed or left-handed? Why would they ask? Well, they always told me it was because it was going to hurt. And if you were right-handed, you might want it in your left arm so that you could still work. It's always about working for the hive, isn't it? 
the entire rationale put forward for vaccinating against measles and chickenpox is to minimize the days lost from work and school. Of course, you lose your life on a single vaccine, but the hive must work on. The largest portion of the lymphatic system is on the left side of the body. The arm drains across the chest, as does the breast, on its way to the thoracic duct. What do you think is going to happen to that delicate breast tissue when corruption of hell flows past it during the depot flow? See, I didn't deliver my message to the hot chick in an unkind way. It was just a casual conversation, one that should save her life if she understood what I had given her in two simple questions. If we can revisit my observation that women tell me their entire intimate health history, what developed after decades of that kind of revelation is that women in general are messed up. And the ones that I found the most attractive on the outside had been horrifically damaged on the inside. I started seeing a sinister underbelly to what was called health care that I later labeled health kill. I'm not being unkind now when I tell you what comes next. This is grim. If I am right, then it implicates the entire structure of what you call life, government, society, licensed professionals, as part of a singular military conspiracy to harm, maim, and kill every living thing on the planet. However, we will focus solely on the promised topic of this video, breast cancer. Virus Cancer Program, 1976, Division of Cancer Cause and Prevention, National Cancer Institute, U.S. Department of Health, Education and Welfare, Public Health Service, National Institutes of Health. Page 85, Breast Cancer Virus Studies Section, July 1975 through June 1976. In this document, they acknowledge that the mouse mammary tumor virus discovered more than 40 years ago is genetically and immunologically similar to that found in human breast cancer. You need a little more background that you can find only in my books. Back in the day when they were first developing vaccines as industrial poisons, the goofy fucking things passing for scientists were literally grinding monkey brains in blenders on tabletops. The fuckers were getting sick and dropping dead. A request was put to Truman for funding to create what is now known as biosafety level 4 containment, and the money was given instantly. War knows no dollar limit. After fucking all, it was your tribute money that was the funding for the weapons development to be used against you, so money was never an object. But before they invented the lockdown, there had to have been a large number of laboratory amplified biological agents that got out into the general populace on the shoes or the hands or the lungs of the stupid lab workers. Hi honey, I'm home! Lab worker kisses his wife, transmitting some exotic jungle virus to her. Daddy, daddy, what did you bring me? Lab worker's child grabs him by the hand, getting a hot boxed version of a bacteria that was rather immune to washing his hands with ivory soap. But those are just the expendable fucks. You know, someone higher up directing this medical Manhattan project probably thought it was very efficient to send out a bunch of mice with mouse mammary tumor virus to see if it would, quote, take in the human population. After all, the going legend is that you simply have to inhale hantavirus from mouse poo and you get to bleed out your eyes. Of course, that strain of Hanta was probably the beta test by DARPA. Human breast cancer also has similarities to Mason-Pfizer, you have to love that combination, monkey virus, MPMV. This gift from hell comes from your favorite rhesus monkey, from which so many blessings of human genome corruption flow. 
They took the Reese's pieces of complementary DNA and made an MPMV RNA that hybridized with the human virus that must have been some kind of test to tell them that the two corruptions were compatible. What it told me is that if the Masonic murder was not able to infect humans before, it was now. Shit, we're only on the first page that we were studying in the virus cancer program. The MPMV was specific to breast tissue in women. The antigens appeared nowhere else in the body or other tumors. In their tests to hybridize mouse mammary tumor virus, they were checking the complementary DNA matchups with different versions of it. Mice have races, people have races, and matchups with casein. Now, whenever I see milk protein, the first thing I think of is that it is one of the four basic food groups of the self assembly of bacteriophages without the use of bacterium. Casein, yeast extract, B vitamins, and phosphorus. Breakfast of champions. Glucocorticoids, like cortisone, were one of the molecular switches that got the virus-infected cells to produce RNA, like a cheese-fed mouse makes turds. It increased replication 10 to 20 times. Then they went all loony Louis Pasteur and used corticosteroids and dexamethasone a synthetic steroid for inflammation, to go across species into mink and cats to get them infected as well. Crossing species barriers amplifies, does not attenuate virulence. That was the great lie of Pasteur when he forced rabies into many different animals to, quote, attenuate the virus. Everything with these insane fucks is opposite day. Not to worry, the mutated breast cancer virus is now adapted to mink lung tissue and kidney cat tissue. Avoid sneezing mink and peeing cats and you'll be breast cancer free. This is not medical advice. Oh shit, there is that thing where they scrape the genitals of small animals like mink to make them overproduce musk to use in perfumes so that women can attract men with the rubbings of furry an <laughs> of furry mammals genitals <laughs> since all scent products are proprietary formulas we will never know what is in them from a microbiological point of view so the entire musk perfume industry might have been a cover for the medical Manhattan Project to give women breast cancer. And since, well, unless you like cross-dressing and going to gay bars, then it's predominantly women who are going to spend billions of dollars to support the scent industry. Why women think they have to rub animal genitals and whale vomit on themselves to be attractive? I'll never know. Here's the motherfucking load. Virus Cancer Program, 1976, page 97. In studies on the induction of MPMV infection in pregnant and postpartum monkeys, three monkeys received MPMV during late gestation and one monkey postpartum. There was no febrile reaction following inoculation. However, protracted lymph adenopathy occurred in the three monkeys that received the virus prepartum. Lymphocyte transformation tests revealed that the cell-mediated immunity in these animals had been depressed following the virus inoculation. The period of immunosuppression seemed to correspond with the lymph adenopathy. Page 99. A minor area of investigation involves the biochemical characterization of the type B BUDR-induced guinea pig virus 
and its possible relatedness to MMTV and to MPMV. Holy Hebrew hominids or signing Simeon Shemites. Pfizer did their own study in 1975. Wild type MPMV and one of the clones, N5C, free of simian type C virus, were shown to transform monkey foreskin FS2 cells. Most of the transformed sublines continue to produce infectious virus. Pfizer also tried to force their monkey virus into the kidney cells of mice. It didn't work. Not to worry. Another company was making antiserum to the virus in goats. Antiserum is what they use for diphtheria, scarlet fever, and tetanus before vaccines came along. You would shoot up an animal like a horse with the agent that you wanted antibodies for and then harvest the blood after it had formed enough antibodies. Then you would shoot this serum into humans. This is where the realization of serum sickness came from. But back to the goats. Don't ever try to butt a goat. They shot the mice up with the antiserum and it induced autoimmunity. Tel Aviv's university objectives to attempt to isolate and grow type B virions from the milk of breast cancer patients or from human adenocarcinomas using human embryonic tissue culture cells as substrates to develop methods for the assay and enhancement of production of these quote biochemical viruses and to continue characterization studies of the biochemical virions produced in human cell cultures and their relationship to mitochondria. Contract term 1972 to 1976. Virus Cancer Program Clinical Studies section, page 113, segues into combining the human and animal studies to look for patterns in human diseases. Although some references would seem cryptic or be dismissed by a casual reader for the mention of their interest in Merrick's disease, Routinely shot into factory farm raised fowl. Don't eat chicken wings. Feline leukemia, that is the equivalent of cat AIDS, and murine leukemia, the mouse AIDS that the 1972 WHO memos were playing with, brings a sharp focus to the timeline and how this virus cancer program publication was contemporary with the 1972 WHO memos and how AIDS was just around the corner. It makes very confusing statements on how Burkett's lymphoma is not related to Epstein-Barr as the primary cause of tumors, but it goes on to say that a very suspicious collection of people from all over the world show reactions to Epstein-Barr virus testing with the implication that it is everywhere and can be the source of tumors. Whenever I see Epstein-Barr virus, I immediately think of a series of articles that I harvested on the use of DMSO in virology. It turns out that I don't have any materials about the molecular switches on Epstein-Barr virus, but the pursuit of that topic led to the DMSO connection. We start out with our friend mouse leukemia virus. Getting a very strange feeling creeping in your guts that this disease is being studied way too much. Hemoglobin synthesis in murine virus-induced leukemic cells in vitro. Stimulation of erythroid differentiation by dimethyl soft oxide. By friend Shear, Holland, and Sato. November 30, 1970. Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Sloan Kettering. During the course of studies to determine the effect of superinfecting these cells with friend leukemia virus, Dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, was added to the medium. 
DMSO had been demonstrated to enhance infectivity of both polio virus RNA and mango virus RNA, as well as transformation by polyoma virus. It is also known to stabilize enveloped viruses. The wide range of biological activities of DMSO has been described. The present report describes an effect of DMSO on the differentiation of established lines of murine virus-induced leukemic cells and illustrates still another property of this compound. In the dose-response experiments initially set up to determine the toxicity of DMSO on the leukemic cell lines, a striking effect on the differentiation of these cells was noted. Of the cells allowed to grow in the medium containing 2% DMSO for four days, a majority of the erythroblasts had matured to normal blasts, which stained benzidine positive. The increase in the number of cells maturing along the erythroid series in DMSO containing media was accompanied by an increase in the amount of hemoglobin synthesized. Then we go to recurrent herpes simplex in the mouse. Inflammation in the skin and activation of virus in the ganglia following peripheral stimulation. Journal of Genetic Virology, 1983, 64, pages 1491 through 1498, Harbor, Hill, and Blythe. The originally infected ear of mice latently infected with the cervical ganglia with herpes simplex virus, HSV, was treated with one of five stimuli. Stripping with cellophane tape, irradiation with UV light, or the application of xylene, dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, or retinoic acid. Each of these stimuli induce the appearance of infectious virus in the ganglia one to five days later, most frequently after one to three days. Now, retinoic acid, also known as vitamin A acid, is used for the topical treatment of acne. In humans, I know we have been all about the mouse. I can't look up every tiny fact, but it seems like they use it in women's... Yes, we do have a theme to this. Cosmetics. Pretty damn scary if they have sold you a molecular switch that activates viruses that you rub on freely of your own consent and pay for it. Now, DMSO is the darling of chelation, yet it seems to activate viruses. Hmm. What to do with that kind of information? You see, I have a very low book and information distribution rate around the world. The reason is, besides my offensive language, is that I tell the truth. That interferes with a lot of people who are trying to make money using a technique and setup that they learned like monkeys learning Dungeons and Dragons role-playing so that they could go out and practice something that they did not develop themselves and never took the time to research. I found all of my articles in a single day. So they wouldn't be looking for any position contrary to the one that makes the money. We saw that in my Crookshank transcriptions. Jenner had so targeted a population that they had to do his voodoo just right or it wouldn't work. Sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. To focus on the technical aspects of a thing distracts from the why, the purpose, and the efficacy of a thing. CAPACE-3 activation is essential for efficient influenza virus propagation. EMBO Journal, Volume 22, Number 11, pages 2717 through 2728, 
2003, Wurzer et al. Like all these tedious papers, I look for patterns. The gist is that they used promoters and suppressors to see what effect was on viral populations. What they use as a, quote, control was a solution with DMSO in it and arbitrarily set it at 100%. I only take that to mean that the DMSO was conducive to the full expression of the flu virus. Activation of viruses in human tumors by 5-iodo-deoxyuridine and dimethyl sulfoxide. Science, Volume 175, January 4, 1972, pages 198 through 99, dimethyl sulf oxide added to cultures first treated with 5-iodo-deoxyuridine increased C-type virus production approximately tenfold in a human rhabdomyosarcoma cell line. 5-iodo-deoxyuridine followed by dimethyl sulfoxide also activated a similar C-type virus in a metastatic tumor from a bronchial node taken from a 52-year-old male. And now for a mind blower that I had not come across in the sweeping up behind the data elephant all of these years. Because viral transformation of normal to malignant cells is often associated with loss of virus, virus-transformed cells frequently become non-virus producers. The DMSO was added to transformed tissue culture cells in which the virus had been activated by IDU. Often as I write a book, it is over such a long period of time that I have the leisure to ruminate over new data as it's added to the book, come back and perhaps comment or expand on a concept before it is set to print. This idea of the virus pretty much co-opting the cell and then disappearing, but causing the cell to be a consuming monster is so new to me that I can't even form an opinion on it. The article supposed that the DMSO allowed the virus to penetrate the cell membrane for greater infectivity to the point of an increase of a power of 10. The description, however, is that of a binary weapons delivery system. The 2% DMSO medium added to cells that had not been treated with the IDU did not activate virus production. For so long, I have been trying to get people to realize what a binary weapon is. In a chemical binary weapon, quite often each of the chemicals are inert on their own. It's only when they occupy the same place at the same time, like mixing IDU and DMSO in the cell, that the explosion occurs. In the case of a ballistic weapon, it would be that of an armor-piercing shell, uh, DMSO letting the virus in, followed by a high explosive charge once it had penetrated the target. For those of you who have long memories, and to my great admiration, most of my readers do, look at the pantheon of biological weapons this fellow was exposed to and keep an eye on the dates. Using the IDU DMSO activation procedure, we have also been able to demonstrate a virus in tissue culture developed in July 1968. That would be a Pentagon bioprospecting year from a metastatic adenocarcinoma obtained from a bronchial node. The node had been taken from a 52-year-old male who had formerly had polymyositis. This culture is contaminated with mycoplasma, which were probably derived from the patient's lungs. It is possible that the mycoplasm has an inhibitory effect on the virus. I have no words to comment. PDFs like this were harvested in 2008 in anticipation that I would somehow be able to incorporate the data into the big picture. 
I only just cracked open the virus cancer program text in 2012. So imagine the surprise and a few choice words that were spontaneously ejected when I read the last footnote. This study was conducted under contract 436553 within the special virus cancer program of the NIH. The rotten cuckoo's egg does not fall far from the rotten tree. I put together the bulk of this narrative and released it to the public in 2012. I still have no ability to comment on certain aspects of this, but I do like creating a bit of suspense, especially for the ladies because I know that women simply can't stand suspense. The reason that I called the material several pages above the motherfucking load was that it cited guinea pigs. Now, the dulled mind is conditioned for knee-jerk reactions whenever stimulus is applied, but I did promise you genius-level thinking, but it comes from a place that not many would dare to go. There is an annoying phrase, what would Jesus do? I found that since this AWOL salting agent, salvation means to salt, is totally useless, that an opposite day application might read something like, what would Satan do? It's totally in keeping with Sun Tzu's admonition to know your enemy. So if you simply project that these crazy fuckers engineered a tissue-specific breast cancer that was adapted to mice and mink and cats, then you would be limited to just those animals as a military deployment as vectors. They would have to piss, shit, and sneeze their way across the world to give the levels of tissue-specific breast cancer that we see. Let me slow down a bit to say that cancers are not tissue-specific. Cancer is fucking cancer, and it will metastasize wherever the hell they chase it to by real helpful techniques like cutting into it so that the infectious cells are liberated into the blood and lymph. The fact that they had engineered a weapon for a specific organ is astounding. But we were examining the delivery of said weapon. Let me bring it to you this way. Mommy, mommy, can I have a gerbil or a guinea pig as a pet? By now, you're probably looking at me like that green-eyed lady. Sorry, there's no nice way to do this. What we are immersed in is asymmetrical, full-spectrum warfare. Whereas you thought you were acting out some kind of script of housewife or mommy, where having a family pet was just part of the flat-earth experience, what it really was, was just one more of many vectors for a military weapon deployed to take that innocent, happy image of motherhood and life, whatever the hell that is, and smash it like a petulant kid that only knows destruction as some form of creation. Hey, didn't I just describe the Gnostic Demiurge? No. No. Family pets are not some loving life form that you have captured to cohabitate with. They are military Trojan horses designed by an evil so deep and dark that if you knew what I knew, you would probably give up and wither away. Of course, I didn't write Eve's Ill to appeal to a population of useless female slugs. The information I share should incite rage so intense that nothing should stand in the wake of their retribution. Everything that you held to be dear and pure has been converted to a lethal weapon and used against you and your families. Further along in the motherfucking load documentation is the use of monkey foreskins in virus production. So you'll have to reference my video Henrietta Lacks to see the background on how human and monkey foreskins added to the corruption of what you thought was life. 
But then that shifts the focus of all these animals as weapons vectors and gets you to thinking that that shiny needle with the clear fluid that you didn't make might have the very breast cancer virus that you didn't know existed until today, that you never would have suspected that evil military fucks would shoot into innocent women just for kicks because no one ever called this a military assault. And what do you do when a hostile force attacks you? But you might think that I am just implicating the white coats that poison and vaccinate people as a matter of course. Didn't you see the DMSO references? Isn't DMSO promoted as like the second coming savior of more conditions than even I pay attention to? Why would I care what it's sold for? This gray coat panacea is a substance that takes everything from the surface of the skin inside the cells. I'm sorry, uh, but I work with my hands every day. I know what's on my skin, and no matter how hard I scrubbed, I would never drive what was on my skin into the cells against all nature for health. But as you saw, and you can make your own conclusions, was it for health? Or was it to make the viruses go stealth? I can't discount folks that say that they had this or that ailment, used DMSO, and all of a sudden they were cured. Cured? To push a virus into a cell where it wasn't before, and then to make it go quiescent is not a cure. It just went stealth. Kind of like the Lyme illiterate doctors that give antibiotics for Lyme infections when everyone knows that antibiotics take the cell walls off of bacteria, making them go stealth as L forms. But I promise you, not just my genius, but to stay on the topic of breast cancer. We also saw above that herpes is activated by many things from UV light to cellophane tape adhesive to DMSO. Herpes, if you read my Prion Agenda book, is an oncovirus, causes cancer. And he thought it was just for cold and genital sores. Epstein-Barr virus is also an oncovirus. Where do we see both of these monsters? Well, like I said, stop eating the fucking chicken wings because that's where they vaccinate the birds for a form of herpes. But most of it will be coming from the polio shots. Good God, women. From the laboratory-created breast tissue-specific agents to the monkey shit viruses in the polio made with SV40, another cancer virus, and Henry Lacks's cervical cancer cells, it makes us wonder out loud why the human female is not extinct. Do you think now, after you met me, that that isn't their goal? Think you have any friend on this planet other than me? Who on the planet tells you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Can we bring the Yehud kicking and screaming into the light that seems to burn them like vampires? They were studying biochemical viruses. I'm sorry, but I don't read Hebrew, so what the fuck is that? Sounds to me like a synthetic weapon. Their focus was how their creations affected the mitochondria. Um, what important case was won in vaccine court for a child that got autism from a vaccine? The special masters determined that it was an unfortunate accident because the girl had a pre-existing mitochondria defect. Uh, do we need to reprise the Yehud citation? How's your memory? Ah, what the hell. Tel Aviv University's objectives. To attempt to isolate and grow type B virions from the milk of breast cancer patients or from human adenocarcinomas using human embryonic tissue 
culture cells as substrates to develop methods for the assay and enhancement of production of these, quote, biochemical viruses, and to continue characterization studies of the biochemical virions produced in human cell cultures and their relationship to mitochondria. So is predisposition to autism from mitochondrial damage from an environmental cause? I would say the, the Yehuds and their poisons are everywhere. I'm not just Tel Aviv. Uh, don't think I'm off topic. Their little project included breast cancer from breast milk and embryonic tissue, a.k.a. aborted babies. Better watch my Henrietta Lacks video just to reinforce the subtleties that you're sure to miss if you haven't been doing this for over 30 years. And if you haven't, then sorry about making you open your mouth while standing under Niagara Falls. You'll get used to it after you get over the gag reflex. Oh, <laughs> you never get over the gag reflex. Jesus, can he stop now? No, I promised you, genius. This pig ain't dead yet. If you had either ICD-999 or its timeline put into timeline, then you would know this. 1936, Bittner discovers mice can transfer mammary breast cancer to their young through nursing milk or father's sperm. Milk-born Mammary Tumor Agent, MTA. Brody and Parks say formaldehyde inactivation of viruses may be incomplete. Adsorbing virus to alum masks the failed process. The deliberate disregard for their findings led to the Cutter incident. For you women, the ones who have the courage or just morbid curiosity to follow me in this far. I share all these facts not for a sense of overwhelming hopelessness, but to show you the true image of the beast that you previously only felt in the darkness. I was taught by a martial arts grandmaster that you can't fight what you can't see. See it with me. We open this entire exploration into the abyss with MMTA. In the name of the gods that don't exist, all you have to do is get the weapon inside either human parent, and they will pass this horror that terrifies women to their successive generations. So when the physician who is nothing but uniform military of a hostile occupying force smugly says that breast cancer runs in families, he or she, or fucking it, is not lying. They fucking put it in there. Is there any other response to this than summary execution? They know this is a military operation. Even the polio is a binary weapon within a weapon. Cooking a virus for formaldehyde does not inactivate it. The aluminum that is now all the rage because mercury has been given a backseat is a masking agent for this known weapons delivery system. So what they are saying is that they are simply sluicing the viri from its docking station in that nice shiny needle with a clear fluid directly into your bodies like sliding peas from one plate to another with a knife. Now you know a little bit of what I know. It's hard to share genius in 5,000 words or less. I hope it didn't let you down. I can't say that I hope I didn't disappoint you because you should be disappointed that everything you thought life was about was a lie and lethal. I do hope that you are enraged and ready to do something about it.